All right, how's it going, guys? I'm uh, my name's Tyler Kraus, and I'm going to be talking today about uh, multi-point anchors and uh, how they can be really dangerous and how they can be really safe. So uh, basically, what happened was I was at work today, and we're cutting off all these handrails at a hotel on the balcony, and we were trying to figure out the safest way to anchor ourselves down uh, with to our harnesses with the lanyard. And one of the ideas that came up was uh, tying a rope between two anchors um, and then clipping onto that, that rope or cable. And uh, that actually could be really dangerous. Um, and so I came home and I'm, I'm an engineering student right now. So I thought, well, let's figure out what kind of load these, kind, these, uh, these anchors are actually experiencing if you have two anchors with a cable between. And uh, did some calculations and the results were pretty surprising. Um, if you're into climbing, uh, any kind of rescue, like confined space rescue or anything like that, or caving or anything where you're hooked up to anchors and a harness and everything like that, this might be kind of interesting for you. And um, I'm going to be make it as basic as I can um, because I know I know I know that not everyone's uh, into math and trig and physics and stuff. So um, if that's your thing, you might want to skip through a little bit of the video because I'm going to basically. Um, make things as clear as possible so uh, everyone can understand what's going on. Um, there was one guy that tried to explain it, and uh, I think I put it as a, this is going to be a response to that video. He did an okay job, but um, I think this will kind of give you a little bit more theory behind it. His was more of like a practical example kind of thing. So um, to get into it, I guess I'll kind of show you what I'm what I'm what I'm talking about. So basically, there's there's two two types of anchoring that 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 I had in mind. The first kind was, so I got my cute little dinosaur, or no, it was awesome. So the first kind was you got the dinosaur hanging from the rope, and the rope's on one point here, if you can see that. Um, so essentially, what's going to happen is if this guy weighs 150 pounds, then this hook's going to have to be able to hold that, right? And now the other option that um, we were thinking of was, well, why not have two anchors? So I'll just just to keep this point here. So we'll say that each hand is uh, um, is an anchor, and then the the person would be hanging from the middle. Okay. Now what happens here is uh, really surprising, actually. The load on these two anchors isn't just uh, half of the the weight of whoever's hanging from it. Um, so if my dinosaur weighs 150 pounds then each of my fingers, they're not holding up, they're not holding 75 pounds each, they're actually holding quite a bit more, depending on the angle that's formed between these two pieces of rope in the middle. And uh, I did some, did some little drawings here, and I'm going to try and uh, explain it as best I can. Um, and basically, it can be really dangerous if you do this. Uh, you can end up breaking your anchors and falling and hurting yourself. So, why is it that this can be dangerous? Let's take a look here. Um, this is a little drawing I made here. Um, this is the very, the very first uh, idea we had. Uh, just an anchor and the person were to fall. Um, and this is, I need to make this clear. Um, I did these calculations based on static load, not a dynamic load. And that basically means um, the person hasn't jumped off of something. They're just simply hanging there. And whatever force that hook is experiencing is based on that person's weight, not based on somebody jumping and then suddenly stopping, because that would actually be quite a bit higher of a force that, uh, that those anchors would need to deal with. So, okay, so this is what I drew up here. So there's a person, we'll say I did it based on me. I know I'm pretty light. I got to hit the gym. I'm 160 pounds, and, um, and there's a hook that's holding me. So what's going to happen is that hook's going to have to hold 160 pounds. Now, this is the second option here. There's me hanging from the middle of a rope connected to two anchors, and I weigh 160 pounds again. Um, and these anchors can actually experience an infinite amount of loading. And essentially, you could, you could break any anchor, no matter how strong it was, even if it was bomb-proof, um, in theory. Uh, in real life, obviously, you can't do that, but it can be really dangerous. So let's explain how this works. So I'm gonna. Okay, I'll find my, 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 I made a couple drawings here and hopefully you can understand them. So here's one and I have basically what it is, is two anchors 
and there's there's a there's I, I I didn't draw the cute little stick man this time, um, but you can imagine that he's at the end of this arrow, and so there's 160 pounds hanging from the middle of this rope, and this rope has quite a bit of slack in it, as you can see, um, and the degree, uh, the angle that's formed here is 45 degrees. Okay, so take a look at that picture, and then and then take a look at this one. It's a little bit different, except except the angle is um, is a little bit a little bit less. You can see it's 15 degrees here. And then I drew another one, and uh, this one was I did it. I drew a one degree angle here, um, so that line doesn't have very much slack in it. So now let's try and do what's called a force analysis on here. And um, it, it was mentioned in that other video, uh, something about vectors. And essentially, that's what I'm going to be using is vectors. And if you're not familiar with vectors, don't get scared. It's really simple. Um, I'll explain it to you in the best terms possible. So um, the, the easiest way to figure out what these, how much loading these these hooks are experiencing is basically to do a force analysis on one of the hooks. So if we go down here, you can see I decided to do a little drawing here, and basically what this shows is this one hook here, so the same hook, this hook is actually having to support this force at 45 degrees. Okay, does that make sense? Now we want to figure out what that force is. So to figure, and it's not, I, I can tell you now, it's not 160 pounds. So to figure that out, what we have to do here, and I did another cute little drawing, um, each, this, this force acts in two directions. It acts in the uh, vertical direction, we'll call it the Y axis, and it also acts in the horizontal direction, and we'll call that the X axis. So I drew those two arrows down here. So there's the Y direction and the X direction, and then the one that's in between, that's the force that this hook has to apply to make sure that I don't fall. So this force here, the diagonal force, is exactly opposite to this force here. Okay, and that's just this line right here. Okay, so how do you figure that out? Well, first we need to figure out what we know, and what we know is that I weigh 160 pounds, and that's acting in the y direction. So each hook has to hold 160 pounds in the y direction. So we take that and divide it by two, and we get 80 pounds. But that's only up and down. And this this rope here isn't vertical; it's it's uh, diagonal. Um, so it's actually it, it needs to be it needs to hold quite a bit more. And the way to figure that out is with some simple trig. Um, and if you've ever taken this is this is all from like high school physics and math. It's a simple trig. Basically, what I'm using is this the the, the Sokotoa rule here. Um, and and you're going to say, well, we're not doing measurements. And you're right, we're not. We're doing forces. But part of vector, vector um, calculation is, is, um, is trig. And you can use that with both forces and measurements. So it doesn't matter if these sides are in a length, like let's say 80 inches, um, or 80 pounds, or 80 newtons. It doesn't matter if it's a force or if it's a measurement of length. Um, you can still use simple trig to figure out the magnitude of each side. Um, and mag by magnitude, I mean the magnitude of the force, so the weight of, of uh, whatever portion you're trying to figure out. So we know that the O over here um, is 80 pounds because that's half of 160, right? And, and we know the angle is going to be 45. So we'll, we'll use the sine here. So the, so the, the rule for this is the sine of an angle uh, is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse or the, the, the diagonal line there. And that's what we're trying to find, right? The, the hypotenuse. So we'll say that H equals the max load, okay? So then, so, and then the o, uh, o equals the weight of the person divided by two. So this is, oh, you probably skip over this. Um, now, if you look over here, we have uh, sine of the angle uh, is equal to 80 pounds divided by the max load. So if your angle is 15 degrees, your load is 309 pounds on that anchor. If you have 45 degrees, the max load is 113 pounds, so it's a little bit less. Now, what happens if that if that rope is really straight? And remember, we're talking about this angle right here, okay? What happens if that rope is really straight? Well, you can see right here that this one here is very straight, it's one degree. The load experienced, if I'm hanging from this and I weigh 160 pounds, the load experienced by this one anchor is almost 5,000 pounds. So if you're using an anchor that supports only 2,000 pounds, and you think it's okay to use it because you only weigh 160 pounds, it's not okay because it's actually uh, quite a bit higher. So the easiest way to make sure you're safe is keep that 